Hello, and welcome to How to Be Orange, the audiobook experience. I enjoyed writing the book, I certainly enjoyed reading it, and I hope you enjoy listening to it. Go to youtube.com slash Greg Shapiro and subscribe to my channel, and then you can click on the playlist. Enjoy. How to Be Orange, Chapter 9, Politician of the Year. The quote. I hope this kid doesn't come to me to extend his residence permit. Fred Tafen, State Secretary of Security and Justice for the Netherlands. In the world of political stand-up comedy, there's one top gig, the White House Press Correspondents Dinner. In Dutch politics, there's no real equivalent, but I've come close. Every year, the newspaper Het Parool hosts an event called the Year in Politics, and I was the host in 2011, right after Geert Wilders took power. But I'll get to that in a minute. One of the shows that we do at Boom Chicago is called Political Party. We treat Dutch politics like Americans do, as an over-the-top celebration. Pep Rosenfeld and I co-host the show with political pollster guru Maurice de Hond. Maurice invites his favorite Dutch politicians, and here's how it works. We interview the politician, we find out who's the politician's adversary, and then we make the politician dress up as the adversary and answer questions in character. Meanwhile, I answer questions dressed up as the politician. For example, one of our first guests was Femke Halsema, former head of the Green Party, Groen Links. We interviewed Halsema. She said her adversary was the more right-wing Mark Rutte. She dressed up as Mark Rutte and answered questions as I dressed up as Femke Halsema and answered questions. She did a pretty good Mark Rutte, and afterwards she said it was a surprisingly liberating experience. Likewise for me. While she was busy making Rutte look ridiculous, I was free to make her look ridiculous. It's one thing to stand in front of the U.S. president and make jokes about him, but sitting next to a politician and doing an impression of her is not for the faint of heart. Someday I hope to live up to the shining example of Stephen Colbert, who famously stood next to George W. Bush and ridiculed the president without him even realizing. Another one of our guests at political party was Lodewijk Usher. Back then, he was Amsterdam deputy mayor. Now, he's deputy prime minister. His English was no problem. And somehow, in my experience, when politicians answer questions in their second language, they're a little more candid. Of course, we had to point out that Usher's name doesn't translate very well into English. It starts with ass and ends in chair. But actually, for a civil servant, it's kind of perfect. We teased Asher that he looked like the perennial young man actor John Cusack. Cusack made High Fidelity a fine film, and Asher made a priority of improving school infrastructure a fine move. But then came the North-South line in Amsterdam, which, like Cusack's 2012, was way over budget and deeply unsatisfying. Lodewijk Usher picked as his adversary former Prime Minister Jan Peter Balkenende. He entered with, Folks, if you liked the government's Balkenende 1 through 4, you're going to love Balkenende 5. And of course, I sat next to Usher doing my impression of Lodewijk Usher. As it turned out, Usher was not only a good improviser, but a good actor too. He didn't just do a simple Balkenende impression. He really got into character. He started debating as Balkanenda. His Balkanenda started attacking my Asher as a big government liberal. Now let's take a moment and give this man credit for that. How many politicians are able to jump in and debate from both sides of an argument? In retrospect, I guess it's a key criterion for anyone wanting to take part in Dutch politics, the art of compromise. More recently, Deputy Prime Minister Usher has been busy with labor reform negotiations, and as famous sociologist Charlie Moskos used to say, 
You know it's a good example of a compromise when everyone is disappointed equally. Perhaps our most unlikely guest at political party was a man named Hero. Hero Brinkman was a member of Geert Wilder's party Pei Fei Fei. Nervously, Pep Rosenfeld and I started out the show making a number of jokes about Geert Wilders and Pei Fei Fei. Geert Wilders is the head of the Pei Fei Fei Freedom Party, even though under 24-hour protection, he has no freedom. It's kind of like George Bush starting up a party for the mentally gifted. Geert Wilders was named Politician of the Year, specifically the year 1941, and Geert Wilders doesn't like headscarves, which is ironic because if anyone could benefit from wearing a headscarf, it's the man who dyes his hair blonde, Geert Wilders. Luckily, Hero Brinkman was not a fan of Geert Wilders himself. At one point, Brinkman had been number four on the party list, but as Hero Brinkman explained, when he started speaking out about the need for more democracy within the Freedom Party, Wilders bumped him down to number 14 on the list. According to Brinkman, the Freedom Party is not really a party, since there's only one official member, Geert Wilders. You may notice other political parties having meetings, voting on internal issues, electing members to party leadership. Not so with the Freedom Party. That would apparently be too much freedom. Brinkman would go on to split off and form his own party, creating yet another exotic item on the grand menu of Dutch politics. In America, we have over 300 million people, only two political parties. The Netherlands has just 17 million people, but well over 17 parties. Apparently, the smaller the country, the more they like to disagree. I spoke once at a private event for a bunch of former politicians. In attendance was former Prime Minister Ruud Lubbers. He was accompanied by former Immigration Minister Geert Leers. Oh, both of their eyebrows were fantastic. Geert Leers has white hair and distinctive black eyebrows. But the eyebrows of Ruud Lubbers are historic. They're of Brezhnev proportions. Yet between these two guys, Lubbers is the one who is known for his leers. ba dum bum These are not jokes I made at the event. The event was a meeting for the Society of Old Dutch Christian Democrats. That wasn't the official name, but that's how it felt. The place was crawling with them. The speakers included Ruud Lubbers, who was interesting, Peter van Uhm, retired four-star general in the Royal Netherlands Army and former chief of defense, was excellent. But the one I really wanted to hear didn't speak. Former immigration minister Geert Leers. His party, CDA, was in the coalition with Geert Wilders, and I was curious to know how much of the immigration policy was dictated by Geert Wilders. Next up, I performed my routine comparing Dutch politics to U.S. politics. I said... In America, our elections take 18 months. In the Netherlands, there are some whole governments that don't even exist 18 months. Part of me thought I might be asked to leave the building or perhaps the country. But then I was approached by a man in black with a big silver cross. He introduced himself as the Bishop of Maastricht, and he said he loved my speech. Before I knew it, he had introduced me to Geert Leers, and there I was face-to-face with Mr. Immigration. Geert Leers was charming and cordial. I paid him a compliment. It seems you're irreplaceable as Minister of Immigration because there's no more Minister of Immigration. Leers explained that his portfolio had just been taken over by the new Ministry of Security and Justice. Of course, I thought. I just read that the Justice Ministry granted amnesty to child asylum seekers and their families. I asked Mr. Leers, didn't the Justice Ministry deal with a problem that he himself had been unable to solve? Leers said that he was glad to see the issue resolved, but as Leers explained, there is a big downside. Make no mistake. If I could, I would grant amnesty to most asylum seekers. But at some point, you must realize that by giving everyone amnesty, you are giving a huge gift to the human traffickers. He pointed out that overgenerous immigration policies are sending the wrong message to immigrants and the human traffickers. As an example, he mentioned Bosnians in Germany. The German government began a policy of paying Bosnians to return to the Balkans. 
anyone who'd been in Germany longer than two years would be paid thousands of euros to repatriate. The result, according to Lears, was that newly rich Bosnians were coming home and rebuilding their houses with German taxpayers' money. And worse, more Bosnians were now moving to Germany with the express purpose of staying for the minimum two years just to grab German taxpayer money and return home. Clearly, these people were gaming the system. But I couldn't help thinking, what would I do when these wealthy Western nations hadn't done such a good job of protecting my home in Bosnia in the first place? We agreed no one likes human traffickers. It's a huge industry, shuttling the poorest people to the West with false promises in appalling conditions. But according to Lears' logic, those poor people should have had the decency to stay put. Or they should all save up for a ticket on KLM and arrive like civilized people. Back to the year in politics. The event for the newspaper Het Parole was held at the Royal Foyer of the Amsterdam Stad Schouwburg, the city theater. In attendance were members of the new right-wing Dutch cabinet and even Hero Brinkman. I'd prepared quite a bit of material about the new Dutch government, but I hadn't expected them to be standing there. I thought of Stephen Colbert, I took a deep breath, and I went into it. You've got to give Geert Wilders and the PVV some credit. Like Hero Brinkman says, someone has to do something about all this antisocial disrespect for Western values, like the guy who headbutted someone at the bar and put him in the hospital, or the guy who commits sexual misconduct in the workplace, or the guy who beats up his girlfriend while the girlfriend is pregnant. And of course, we're not talking about immigrants. We're talking about the PVV. Marcial Hernandez did the headbutt. Eric Lucasen, sexual misconduct, Dion Graus, domestic abuse. And I went on. These are not just supporters of the Pei Fei Fei. They're, they're in the Pei Fei Fei. They're elected members of parliament who represent us. Every time the Pei Fei Fei gets in trouble is another reminder that the immigrant Alechtonen aren't so bad. Where does Wilders find these people? There's also the guy who had to step down because of financial impropriety and the guy who got caught sending inappropriate tweets. And don't forget the guy who got drunk and went on a rampage in the parliamentary press club. Ouch. With that last line, I was making a direct reference to Hero Brinkman himself. To his credit, Brinkman made no secret about his alcoholic outburst and he's since been drink free. I found myself at the bar after my stand-up set. And there was Hero Brinkman. How would he react? He smiled at me, gave me his free drink vouchers, and said, I won't be needing these. Well played, Brinkman. Well played. I should have quit while I was ahead. Standing next to Hero Brinkman was Fred Tafen of the Law and Order Fei Fei Day Party and State Secretary for the Justice Ministry. Here's the material I did about him and his party. Most cabinets have four legs. A Dutch cabinet mostly has three legs. This cabinet has only two and a half. It's kind of wobbly. It's a minority cabinet. How did this happen? Well, as we immigrants are taught, Nederland is a democracy. There are elections and the most popular parties get the chance to form a coalition, right? The three most popular parties were Fei Fei Day, Labour, and Pei Fei Fei. So shouldn't those three form a coalition? No! In the Netherlands, democracy is not just a popularity contest. There has to be a behind-closed-doors informateur. The key to Dutch democracy is this one unelected guy who takes all his favorite parties behind closed doors and then tells you what the actual coalition will be. Informateurs are appointed according to one qualification. No personal interest in the outcome of the cabinet. One of the informateurs was Yuri Rosenthal, who happens to be of the Fei Fei Day party. As it turns out, he's now a member of the cabinet. But that was just a coincidence. Surely the real architect of the coalition, the one who made sure that the number two most popular party would not be represented, was Ivo Opstelten. Now he's Minister of Justice. Sorry they just changed the name. Now it's Minister of Security and Justice, like in America. Security first, justice later. Is it me, or does this whole cabinet seem crooked? I'm from Chicago. I know crooked politicians when I see them. The Rutte cabinet? I call it the Ikea cabinet. It looks nice at first, but 
you know it's never going to last a whole four years. I avoided Fred Taven at the bar after that, but I did see Hero Brinkman again. He quoted Fred Taven as saying, I hope this kid doesn't come to me to extend his residence permit. Thank goodness, I already have a passport. <laughs>